Okay, we're just hopping on a little bit early because we have a caller on the line and we want to test out some things and make sure stuff works. Who is this and where are you representing, man? What's going on, Bubba? <laughs> yeah. Oh, hold on one A whole bunch of wood. Hey, hold on one second. Let me just double check something. What'd you say, man? All right, cool. you hear um, you hear Hans too. Oh shoot, that's the whole point. Ah, uh, okay. Um, let me see. Um, the same issue that we had before. It's like uh, I, I can hear you, but can it hear everybody else? So uh, we're going to disconnect and we're going to get back to it. Uh, but thanks for helping me out, man. Appreciate it. All right, later. Okay, folks. <laughs> we actually start just a little bit earlier. You know, this is uh normally we go on live at seven o'clock, but we got people in here already, which is great. Um, hey, my name is Brian, aka Uncle B, and I'm the men's performance coach with Goodwood. And this is what we do every yeah, weekdays, seven o'clock. We get into it, we talk about all types of things. Uh, what's going on, Hollis? all up there in the, the comment section. We talk about men's sexual health. And so uh, what we're trying to do is set everything up so we can actually do a live call-in show. You know, we have guys who do want to, uh, got questions. And I got answers. I've been doing this for, <laughs> for 25 years. I got answers. So uh, what I want to do is hear from you. So you can go ahead and hit me up in the comment section. Let me know where you're from and, um, you know, what your, uh, what your name is, where you're from. And let's have a conversation, man. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about your performance score. Uh, we're going to go over that because that's really important. We have launched the Good Wood Wood on Demand Challenge. Um, if you go into the comment, go into the uh, description uh, on YouTube, you will see where you can sign up for that. I highly suggest you do that because that is the way that, you know, uh, you can get over whatever issues that you may have, whatever is ailing you, um, because that's really important. A lot of times, what guys do is thinking that, okay, I have this little issue. It's going to go away. If you do not know how to take care of it, it doesn't just go away. It uh, actually, uh, <laughs> it can get worse. Uh, and that's the thing that we're trying to avoid. So go ahead, hit me up in the comment sections with your questions. Um, and we're going to, you know, just talk about all the things that that's necessary. So just want to give you a quick uh, background and some things that, you know, I talk to about guys with and really interesting stories that always come up. And one that always that stuck out to me is my man who was, you know, he was my Uber driver. Uh, I was out in Utah taking a class and, you know, said the Uber driver in there, he asked me what I did. I said, I'm the men's performance coach with good wood. And, you know, we started talking and he had uh, a heart condition, uh, which meant that he couldn't function the way that he wanted to uh, in the bedroom and neither could he do that for his fiance? And unfortunately, they broke broke off the engagement because of that. And I hear that too often where guys are, you know, they're in situations that doesn't help. I mean, one, he's driving an Uber. So I was like, one of the things you need to do is move around more. I mean, he had, you know, had a little weight to him. And but you know, he's driving Uber, so he doesn't really get out and get into it. So those are the type of things that we have to pay attention to as men. We have a use it or lose it situation, guys. Uh, I'm being serious about this. A lot of times we don't get that, you know, that extra, you know, that 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 understanding that, hey, you know, that whole thing that you want to do with your life in terms of your physicality and having sex and being a, getting good relationships that last. Those type of things require that you uh, that you do some things. And, and believe me, I understand. You know, this is not your fault. This is not something that, you know, you planned on having happen to you. <laughs> this is something that, uh, unfortunately, too many guys are going through, especially now because there's so many things that are wrong with our environment. Um, guys, I'm telling you, from the time you wake up, everything is just off. Um, you think about the way that we grew up. I mean, I grew up the way that humans are supposed to function in nature. Uh, it's basically a requirement that you are able to you know, wake up correctly. And how do you wake up correctly? The sun hits you. You're actually on a cool ground, <laughs> on the ground, you know, maybe a piece of fur, a blanket or something between you and the ground. Uh, you're actually getting energy from the ground. 
And then after that, you got the sun that's waking you up. And so your testosterone is naturally kicking in. Your uh, your serotonin is kicking in. Your melatonin, everything is in balance. We're so out of balance right now. And it keeps showing up in ways that we don't want to have happen. So it's really important that, you know, we all pay attention to our, our health on an extra level now. Because, I mean, that's just waking up. We didn't talk about the fact that, you know, most people are going through with disturbed sleep. If you're having disturbed sleep, I mean, everything from you have the, your pet uh, in the bed with you and that's just moving around, waking you up. Maybe not in the bed, but in the bedroom. Um, you have, you know, uh, the TV or you have a lot of different situ a lot of different things that can affect you. So all of these things have to be taken into to, into totality. That's the reason why we talk about your bedroom performance score, because it's based off of other things that you do, your patterns that you're doing every day. And so that's what the score reflects. It reflects exactly what you're doing every day. So um, this for those guys who are hopping on. We actually started a little bit early. Normally we start at seven o'clock, um, but, you know, things uh, we wanted to test some things. It didn't work out the way we wanted it to. But we are still going to keep going forward with uh, with this. And let me see, are we about to hit the top of the hour? It looks like we are. So let me go ahead and, uh, <laughs> oh, there we go. Let me go ahead and let's get this party started right now. All right. Everybody, welcome. This is Brian, a.k.a. Uncle B. And right now we're starting the Goodwood University office hours. This is where we get a chance to talk to each other. We get a chance to have conversations about men's sexual health and the things that you need to do. Whatever situation you have, it can be improved. You just need to have the right information. It's not just about, you know, like, oh, woe is me. There is no woe is me around here. It's all about getting it in and getting good with uh, the things that we're supposed to do. So uh, today we're going to be talking about that good thing, that almighty thing called the men's performance score, because we're talking about uh, being a part of the Wood on Demand Challenge. Um, you can see that in the description right now. As always, please go ahead, hit me up in the comment section. Let me know what questions that you have so that we can get into it. Um, what we're going to be talking about today is, you know, how to basically score yourself. This is something because I've been a coach for so long, I've basically figured out a way to get guys to be able to help me help them <laughs> by understanding where you are exactly with your score. Um, and this is a score from one to 10. 10 means everything works. One means you need to go to a hospital. Five to seven uh, means that you are uh, unreliable. And the thing that I want guys to understand about this scale is that it actually helps you understand whether or not you're on the downward spiral or on the upward spiral. What we do in the Goodwood Challenge is we take everything we learned over the past 25 years, we encapsulated it so that you can focus in on these five things, these five areas that affect your um, your performance score. And we just we just get into it. <laughs> we just talk about all of those things that you need to uh, know. And so one of the things that's really important is to just recognize what you are. You are a sexual performance athlete. At the end of the day, I mean, think about it. What else are you going to be doing? <laughs> when it comes down to your uh, your life, your your you know the things that you want to do in life, yeah, it's all really important that you are able to function fully. And so you know when you are. 50, 60, 70, you're not going to be a professional basketball player, you're not going to be a professional runner, but, you know, Miss Johnson in the senior center, <laughs> she looking at you. <laughs> so uh, you need to be good for the, your, the entirety of your life. And so that's really important for you to uh, have there. Uh-huh. Uh, hey, we got a great question here from a man. Dion, how's it going there, sir? Uh, is your hembe safe for men in good wood? Actually, yes. That is actually the reason why it's in a combination. That's the way that herbs are supposed to be. Um, because what ends up happening is uh, with your hembe, is, uh, your hembe in particular, uh, your hembe is the bark of a tree. And, you know, your hembean is the actual, is the actual chemical uh, that is there for, you know, it, it does a lot of great things for your body. But by itself, it is very strong. And so when you uh, the the mixture that we have with uh, eight other herbs, 
um, basically it soothes it out. So, you know, we have the ginger in there, which helps with digestion. We have Damiana that's helping with the uh, blood flow and it acts as the aphrodisiac. Uh, cinnamon is a mild aphrodisiac. Um, you know, sarsaparilla helps with blood circulation. All of these work in combination. If you were taking your Hembe by itself and I tried it, um, didn't have a strong effect on me, but I've heard some other guys who are just like, they take it, they get heart palpitations, just a little bit too much for them. So that is a great question. But yeah, um, that is the reason why most herbs are supposed to work in combination with each other. And so that's why we have that formula. Great question, Dion. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. So yeah, um, but what we're talking about is that whole thing of you know, being a sexual performance athlete and being able to use that, uh, your performance score to uh, figure some things out. And I want to go ahead and just hop into um, some actual scores um, because what ends up happening, you know, this is one of the things that we do uh, here is that we uh, basically, we we get scores from guys who, you know, it's like, hey, uh, I wanted to, you know, uh, they talk about their where they are. We ask like several different questions um, and those questions basically help us figure out what your score is and what i want to do today something a little special is actually go through and you know take a look at some scores uh and you know the questions that we have and the type of things that i would say to you um so we have a gentleman here uh who took our survey he is 60 years old needs to lose weight um you know, his sexual health goals, he wants to have erections on demand, boost sexual desire, wants to last longer doing sex, want to boost ejaculations, uh, is not taking any medication. That's great. Um, hasn't had morning wood in a while. Uh-huh. Um, his eating habits, he's tried to eat healthy most of the time. Uh, and as far as meat is concerned, you know, chicken, fish, shrimp, ostrich, everything else, uh, 20%. So he's mostly not eating that. Uh, when does he, when did he start noticing issues with his wood? It was the last uh, few years. And is he currently taking good wood? Uh, no. Mm, Got to work on that, sir. <laughs> um, and what else do we have here? Uh, yep. And so basically his score puts him at A5, which means he's unreliable. Um, and so what would I say to this? I mean, I'm just going off of, I've been doing this for a while. <laughs> I've been just going off of the things that he's saying on here. And more than likely, if you're, you know, if we're talking about age 60, it's not unusual, obviously, to uh, come in at a five. One of the things you have to recognize about uh, men in general as we age is that, you know, um, was it 30 percent of men over 30? have erectile issues, 40% uh, of men over 40, 50% of men over 50, 60% of men 60, 70% of men over 70. It sort of just makes sense. You don't expect a 20, a 25 year old and an 85 year old to have the same level of sexual energy, uh, prowess, et cetera. And also as you get older, if you do not get blood flow, proper blood flow down there, it's called shrinkage, uh, penis atrophy. It's called shrinkage. Your, uh, your, the veins in there, the very tiny veins that are in there will actually start hardening and therefore, you know, you're not getting as much blood flow in there. You're not getting as much oxygen in there and it's going to start shrinking on you. So, you know, um, obviously one of the big things is, you know, he needs to lose weight. And as you get older, one of the things is you don't, you know, you don't need to be as slim um, as guys, you know, who are younger. But as you get older, one of the things that you have to pay attention to is your weight because it starts slowing it down. Every fat cell that you have, there's an actual uh, uh, blood vessel <laughs> that leads to it. So the more fat cells you have, the more blood vessels you have, the more work your heart is doing, the more uh, nitric oxide needs to be pumping through your body in order for you to get uh, blood to the places that you want it to be, especially when we're talking about your penis, because it has some of the smallest blood vessels in your entire body. So. You know, if he's sitting there at a five at age 60, you know, he's on the downward side of things. And what we want to do is get him going back in the upward side. And it's all about your patterns. One of the main things that we talk about in the challenge is being able to look at your patterns and figuring out what it is. What I often do when someone tells me like, hey, you know, I'm not feeling good or whatever the situation is. The first thing I ask them, what's the last thing you ate? Seriously, like, what's the last thing that you ate? You know, my mother would ask, like, when's the last time you had a bowel movement? But man, I'm not going to get that far. <laughs> but uh, what is the last thing that you ate? Because if you don't pay attention to what you're eating 
and how it affects you, you can be following the same pattern over and over again. For a long time, I was able to eat salmon. I was able to eat certain foods and they didn't bother me. As I got older, I started noticing that if I eat salmon, I'm going to have problems with my knee. If I eat shrimp, my left big toe gets swollen. <laughs> it's just levels of inflammation that happens. And it's not just because of meat. It could be because, obviously be because of Doritos, potato chips, uh, alcohol. Anything that you put into your body is going to cause a certain level of inflammation. And that is because, you know, your body has to react to what you just put in there. So that's really important. So for a guy like this, you know, it looks like he's trying to heat, eat uh, healthier, but uh, <laughs> great question, Peter. It looks like he's trying to eat healthier, but there's more work to be done. Um, definitely with the exercises, uh, especially as you get older, it's, it's important. One of the things that I'm doing right now, just give you a, a good uh, thought process to consider, uh, <laughs> learn this from wrestlers. And this is, they will do like 500 air squats a day. And so I just, you know, me, I'm doing the research. I'm like, hmm, let me find out. I started doing it myself. And basically, because you're working the two, the, the largest muscles in your body when you're doing squats, you're actually moving more blood flow. You're stressing your body. You're working your knees. You're, you're helping your balance, especially as you get older. You want to have your balance in place. Uh, so let me get to this question right here from Peter. Um, can Goodwood stop penis atrophy? And theory yes <laughs> what i say in theory is because you know uh it's, it's not a cure-all you have to do other things as well you can't you know take good wood and eat twinkies all day and think it's going to be all good uh, but you know what it does do it increases the blood flow to your penis and that's a like i said it's a user to lose a situation so you need more blood flow um the formula you know you when you one of the side effects, uh, very few side effects of good wood is that your hands and feet will feel cooler. And that's because you're drawing blood to the center of your body and where your genitals are. And, you know, uh, with that, you're actually going to be able to get stronger, firmer, longer lasting erections. Also, it increases your uh, testosterone output. So the bursting and burning of testosterone is what fuels an erection. So you can have erections for a longer period of time. Um, you know, and one of the things that, you know, especially as we talk about, uh, our guy here who is 60, uh, let's call him Kev, uh, who's 60 and who has, uh, some, some of these issues here, basically he's dealing with the prospect of getting to that penis in that realm of penis atrophy. Uh, and you need to, you know, start moving. Uh, start moving, start. If you're taking good wood, it's going to help you with that blood flow. and also. Overnight, you have uh, four to five erections. That fifth erection is usually your morning erection. Um, the better you eat, the better you take care of yourself, the better sleep you have, the more blood flow you have down going down there naturally. So, you know, uh, I, I'm not a person who just sits there and says that you need to, uh, you know, masturbate. <laughs> but at some point, if you're not getting a good sleep, you're, you're, you're it's, once again, use it or lose it, you know, joking. We can call it joking, masturbation, whatever. Uh, uh, just different ways to look at it. But all of this is really important, guys, because when it comes down to it, if you're not taking care of these these types of things, it will get worse. So let's go ahead and take a look at another gentleman. Um, he's in his 50s, and he's looking to improve erection strength, boost sexual desire, last longer during sex, stop premature ejaculation, increase penis size, boost ejaculation. He wants everything. <laughs> And you should get everything. You deserve that, sir. But uh, we have some issues here. He's taking four to seven pills, uh, four to seven medications. Uh, needs to lose weight. Um, he has morning erections once in a while. Interesting. Um, tries to eat healthy. Mm, he eats 75% um, is meat-based. Um, and mm -hmm, started noticing erection issues the last few years and is not taking good wood. Yeah, you, you need some help, sir. Um, and so what we're looking at is if you're, let's get into the medications. My man, uh, let me see. Mm -hmm. What else? Do we have any other information on him? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so, yep, he's coming in at a five on the sexual performance scale. So if you're coming in at a five on the sexual performance scale in your 50s, we just talked about a gentleman in his 60s, but the, here's, the, here's the, the switch up. 
Uh, for this guy, he has four to seven pills, four to seven medications that he's taking. Uh, guys, the whole goal of medications should be to get off of medications. Just remember that. Spread that word. For some reason, some people just get to the thought process that, okay, the doctor hands me medication in, in advance. What was that? They said that you had a, uh, you had to uh, <laughs> keep taking medication for the rest of your life for lupus. Yeah, 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 all of that. Uh, yeah, those. That's not a good look. That is not. He, he recognized that's not a good look, and he's been working out. He's been doing all the right things. He's been taking. Uh, he's taking. Uh, good wood has been taking African fly for you know the longest he takes takes other herbs that we talk about here and so he doesn't have those issues he's not taking those pills um I talked to guys who have diabetes and who do not recognize that you can actually get off of diabetes there's a saying this thing that's like oh you have diabetes it's just there it's like that's not true there is a pattern of things that you did I'm talking about type 2 diabetes there's a pattern of things that you did to get through that process you need to reverse engineer it to get back out of that so you can actually function even better okay uh so yeah let's look, let's take another look at another one so yeah uh he's in his 60s too let me get somebody who's younger all right let's get into the 30s here all right so uh for those guys who join this is brian aka uncle b this is uh goodwood university radio uh we're talking about uh your sexual performance score uh your bedroom score and how to increase that since you are a sexual performance athlete, you might as well train like one. So, um, got a question here from Keith. What's going on, man? How you doing? Uh huh. Mm. Ah, this is always an interesting one. Uh, I have morning wood almost every day, but I'm having trouble keeping it. Once playtime has started, any advice? Woo! That's always an interesting one. So, um. If you're having morning wood almost every day, things looks like everything is is functioning correctly, except for when it's time to perform. Uh, we talk about this a lot. Uh, we talk about performance anxiety, and one of the things about performance anxiety is just the way that you think about it. Um, you know, and I'm not sh exactly sure if this is your situation. I'm just speculating. But you know, if you've had a bad performance before. And then, you know, you have another bad performance <laughs> and then you, it starts getting into your head. You start thinking about it. It's like, oh, man, uh, you know, she she comes over and it's like, OK, I'm not hard yet. What's, what's going on? And, you know, y'all touching each other. It's, I'm not hard yet. And it's like uh, she, she takes her clothes off. You're looking at her. Like, Ooh, she looks good. But mm, I'm not hard yet. Well, basically, it's because you're thinking about it too much. <laughs> you're basically increasing your cortisol by constantly thinking of like, when am I? Suppose when, when it's my Russians coming up and testosterone and cortisol are the, you know, are the enemies. Let me say there's nothing in your body that's an enemy of each other, but it's the out of balance. So you need that testosterone in order to keep getting uh, to keep that erection up. But you also need to have your uh, your your cortisol under control and your cortisol gets kicked off with stress. And so if you're stressing about having sex then you're lowering your testosterone. One of the things to do, um, and this actually works for a lot of guys pretty quickly once they understand this concept, is stop doing that. Uh, don't worry about it. It's like uh, a couple of things. One, just recognize that foreplay is for men. Uh, I say this all the time because what ends up happening is that when you have, um, you know, most of the time when we go around as men, you know, we're not running around just touching people constantly. Yeah, they got laws and all types of stuff. <laughs> and so, you know, we're going out throughout our entire day, not really hugging people, not being in contact with people. And then all of a sudden you see a person is supposed to just, it's just supposed to be there. And it's like, that's not the way your body works, especially as you get older. We're, we're once again, as I started talking earlier today, uh, we're out of balance. And part of that balance is actual human touch from other people, um, you know, and if you're not getting that, if you're not getting stimulation to automatically be turned on, that's a difficult thing to do. So if you're uh, the actual process of touch is going to release dopamine, it's going to release, you know, feel good chemicals and that's going to stimulate the testosterone. You know, if you if you could imagine, you know, just being this happened to me when I was in, <laughs> when I was in high school, uh, we were on a trip and, you know, this young lady that was there on this trip and we had, you know. It was it was wild, <laughs> but it was just that whole thing. My my 
testosterone was already kicking in and she was looking all fine and everything like that. I ended up with blue balls. I mean, <laughs> the point is, it's like, you know, because she was there, because I had a stimulation and we were, you know, sitting next to each other, touching each other, acting like high school kids, you know, it was just off the chain. That's what you need. <laughs> Once, you know, after high school, I don't think I ever had like blue balls like that again. <laughs> and that's because, well, yeah, how, how was that supposed to happen? You know, um, by the time I got out of college, got my first corporate job with AT&T, you know, we went from like co-eds all over the place to soccer moms talking about, you know, babysitting. The turn off stopped turning on. <laughs> there we go. So. Uh, so, yeah, so that's that's something to uh, take a look at there, uh, sir, in terms of what you can do in order to make sure you, you're keeping up. So get that foreplay in and. And also, you know, foreplay throughout the day, you know, just calling her up, talking to her, you know, making some you know, comments and things like that. Obviously, you want to pay attention once again to what you're doing right before you're having sex, uh, because a lot of times people lose out. They lose sight of that whole process where it's like, hey, uh, how many people are um, they, they lose sight of, you know, what you just eat right before any performance? It's, it's sort of like, you know, if you're going to play any any sport. Uh, you know, uh, I think as a sport, you know, sex is almost mostly like uh, swimming because you're changing positions, you're doing things, <laughs> all this, you know, all of these type of things. And what do they say? Don't eat three hours before you go swimming. And that's because your your stomach actually takes three hours to digest food, um, depending on what type of food it is, could take a lot longer. But, you know, as soon as you consume something, your body has to start breaking it down. Otherwise, you're going to run into more problems. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. I hope that helps out with you, sir. So, yeah. Uh, once again, guys, we're talking about, you know, the sexual performance score, your score from one to ten. What's going on, Eric? How's it going, man? Uh, we're talking about your score from uh, one to ten and, you know, where you should be. And we just talked about, you know, a guy in his 30s. Let's see what else we got. We got a guy in his 40s. All right. So what is he trying to do? Improve erection strength, last longer during sex, stop premature ejaculation, increase penis size, boost ejaculations. He wants it all. It's not taking any medication, needs to lose weight. That is a common thing. Um, has the morning erections all the time, tries to heal healthy most of the time. Uh-huh. Uh oh, shoot. I think I just lost that. Oh, here we go. Uh yep. Doesn't eat a lot of meat. Okay. Uh, is not taking good wood. What is wrong with you, sir? And he's uh, so he's a six out of 10, uh, which means that basically he's unreliable. Just to give you, uh, once again, context, uh, five, six and seven is unreliable. Eight, nine and 10. That's uh, morning erections, spontaneous erections, erections on demand. You have all of that. Uh, once you get below a five that you're into ED land and you want to uh, want to avoid that. Uh huh. <laughs> Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Eric. Uh, okay. So, yeah, uh, what would I say about a person with this particular situation? Because a lot of the things he's doing is correct. Um, but what are we looking at here? Uh, I think we're missing some things. You know, it would probably be very interesting to find out what his, uh, you know, what his sleep is like. Because a lot of times what ends up happening is we got guys who, uh, unfortunately, um, they don't take their sleep as seriously. I always say that everything that you do during the day is energy potential. You know, if you're taking, doing a medication, uh, not medication, meditation, <laughs> you're doing your meditation, you're uh, uh, watching what you eat, you're getting your exercise in, you're getting out there in the sun, all of these wonderful things, it builds up energy potential. It doesn't fulfill itself until you go to sleep. And so sleep is one of the most important things that you need to uh, to do, because if you don't get your sleep in, you're going to be running into problems uh, all the time. And let's talk about another different situation here. So, uh, guys, just really quick, just just a reminder. I'm just going through uh, the survey, and you know, I think we have the survey in the description link. If you join us in the Good Wood uh, Wood on Demand Challenge, uh, that's one of the first things we have you do is take the survey, so we can figure out exactly where you are on that scale. And so these are some examples of, of guys, guys, this guy is in his 40. He wants it all. Uh, improve erection strength, last longer, boost sexual desire, stop premature ejaculation, the entire thing. But he is on the slim side, has erections, uh, morning erections all the time, tries to eat healthy. Um, okay. 
I don't know anybody in Wyoming. What's going on? Uh, yeah, and he started noticing uh, erection issues uh, the last few years. So yeah, um, mm, into his forties. So yeah, one of the things that uh, I like to point out to a lot of guys because of you know we talk about weight a lot. You know, uh, I'm a what do you call it? I'm a a mesomorph, as in uh, I got. Uh, we're talking about body types. I got that stocky build. It's easy for me to uh, you know gain strength. It's also easy for me to gain uh, fat. <laughs> <laughs> so it's an ongoing struggle. But on the opposite side of that, there are a lot of guys who are slim who also have issues. And a lot of times we think that, you know, if you're slim, then you wouldn't have health issues. They wouldn't be as really readily there. But here's something very interesting. Um, if you look at bodybuilders, uh, guys who hit in the gym, they, you know, getting swollen, all this other kind of stuff. Some of the professional guys, the guys who are really ripped and cut up. They have diabetes. They have health, health issues. And that's because, you know, if you're sitting there constantly spiking your, your blood with glucose, you're just eating food, eating food that they have to do in order to get to that size and everything like that. What's going on, Don Coolio? If you're trying to get to that, uh, trying to get that size and you're eating constantly, you're spiking your, 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 your blood sugar, you're, you know, really taxing your liver, you're actually going to put yourself into a predicament and so you can have type 2 diabetes and look extremely healthy look extremely healthy so that's really important for the guys who are who are slimmer who think like you know i can just eat whatever i want to um maybe when you're younger but as you get older you know you can get that skinny fat um and it's you know it may not show up in terms of uh fat cells around your body but it's affecting your internal organs so that is the reason why you can be in your 40s be slim and still end up being a five um and you know a lot of other things can play into that really quick uh i do want to touch on some uh-huh Got you, Eric. Uh, I do want to touch on something really quick, and that is on the side of you know your your mental health. We don't really go into it too deep because I'm not a mental health specialist, but I do want to point out to guys is like, yeah, you really need to uh, pay attention to how you're dealing with your day to day stress. And you know, here's an interesting thing: um, when you actually people who actually figure out how to deal with their stress actually have a lot less stress. I mean, you know, it's sort of obvious, <laughs> but um, you're if you're dealing with, if you have stress and you have a plan to, to deal with the stress, it actually works out better for you. So that's really important for, you know, just for how you, your overall well-being. You know, if you have a plan and you're executing on your plan, you know, that's the, you're feeding your body that dopamine. You're actually going to get better. Uh-huh. Ah, Don, this is my issue right now. Weight, weightlifting, trying to pack on size, but I have to constantly eat. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm the opposite, and I lift weights, and I have to constantly stop eating. <laughs> it's crazy, but um, the the thing that you you know to think about though is just being very careful about what you eat, especially because you know the the bodybuilding world is relatively new. You know, we're talking about it's really kicked off in the seventies. And one of the things that came across was like, Hey, you got to eat a lot. I mean, for some guys you do need to eat in order to get that weight to stay on. But, um, if you're getting into those protein shakes, those protein drinks, all the, you know, my question was when I started doing that for whatever reason, <laughs> I had to stop that. Uh, when I started like, you know, oh, let me get the protein bars, the protein shakes and everything. I just started gaining weight. But, uh, but it was like, why am I eating sugar? That's the most important part is trying to figure out, uh, is trying to be very careful about what you eat. You still have to eat clean. It still has to be healthy for you. Um, otherwise, you know, you can, everything you eat is going to increase your glucose. But if you're, uh, you're just constantly slamming extra sugar into your body in the form of these protein shakes, you're actually setting yourself up for the diabetes, for different issues. So, uh, thanks, Don, for for bringing that up. That's a really good point right there. Um, but yeah, 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 yeah. So, guys, um, please do me a favor. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that like button, that subscribe button, that notification bell, all that good stuff that really does help us out. One of the things that we're facing as men 
in general is that the world is lining up against us. They don't want us to be as healthy as we can be because, you know, healthy men are uh, 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 we, we're not we're not the status quo. We, we know how to take care of ourselves. Um, and so we have a lot of entities that are trying to make sure that we do not have the right information. They're like, hey, you know, we just want to push you towards doctors. And that's it. And that is a problem. Um, doctors are great. I'm not saying I have a problem with doctors. Doctors are great at diagnosing and giving pills. Well, depending on the doctor, some of them will diagnose and cut and cut you. <laughs> um, but the uh, the problem is is that that's not a real remedy. A real remedy is you know actually taking care of your entire life. Uh, that's the reason why you know with Goodwood University and us having the Wood on Demand Challenge, we do have our prize winners. Um, I can't remember the names, the names off the top of my head, uh, but we do have the prize winners and we have guys who are, uh, they're going to be getting maca and black seed oil um, because, hey, uh, that's what we do around here. Uh -huh. mm. Okay. Great question, Don. Um, he says, uh, 53, black male, do, does men's uh, multi multi multivitamins play a role in health or a waste of money uh do you take vitamins uh actually no i do not take vitamins i don't take the multivitamins and th it is a particular reason why i don't take multivitamins and it's because i don't how did they get all those vitamins in there <laughs> that is really the the interesting question so basically i always say that um pills are the cheapest form of food known to man it doesn't come from anything every piece of food that you typically eat has to come from the ground at some point, even a, a Ritz cracker with some wheat at some point. You know, um, anything that you can think of, I think the only thing that's totally fake is like a Twinkie, but everything else in some shape or form has to come from the ground. Pills do not, but you go into a grocery store, any grocery store, any pharmaceutical, uh, Walmart, Target, there are lines and lines and lines and lines of pills because they're incredibly cheap to make. We're talking about three cents a pill. So, They'll go ahead and put like, you know, 60 pills in there. Uh, what are we talking about? What, a dollar <laughs> eighty? And they'll sell it for like 20 bucks. Um, and so, you know, when it comes to the the multivitamin, it's your food is a multivitamin. Uh, you know, here's a game that I like to play. Um, it's called Let's Ask Google. And I'm not going to do it right now because my I got Google right, right, right here. But uh, but basically, you know, I'll ask like, you know, what is the in fact, let me go ahead and do that. Let's just let's go ahead and show off right quick because I just had some earlier. Hey Google, what are the health benefits of blueberries? According to Weather Geek, for example, blueberries are rich in vitamin K, which helps promote heart health. The vitamin is also important in bone health and blood clotting. Blueberries are one of the best natural sources of antioxidants. They're thought to have the highest levels of antioxidants of any common fruit or vegetable. Yeah. So I would rather eat a uh, <laughs> a blueberry than get a multivitamin because it's going to do a lot of other things. Just packing in, we have, what is that, um, Centrum A through Z. Okay, so you have A through Z in your body, but all vitamins uh, that we get from fruits and vegetables come with the antioxidants, comes with other, several other benefits. So it's much easier to just go ahead and get your all the nutrients that you need from from fruit from vegetables. So um, I would say it's a waste of money because I wouldn't do it. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, that's an actually interesting point. Uh, Don said right there, uh, if you live in a tropical tropical country, I don't think you need to take a multivitamin. Yeah, yeah, just go pluck it off a tree. You got the sun right there. You got your vitamin D. Uh-huh. Eric says, Pomegranates as well. Oh, yeah. I love the pomegranate juice. And yeah, can't trust these GMO fruits. Interesting thing about GMO fruits is that um, most of the fruits that we already consume, you know, whether we call them GMO or not, um, is uh, already altered by humans. So the bananas that we see, you know, in the bananas, those little dark marks that are in there, those are supposed to be seeds. If you were to look, take a look at the original banana before man came in and did all the extra things to it, it's lumpy. It's just, just big seeds in there. 
And so, you know, you like taking seeds out to get to the uh, to the banana part of it. Um, and so the same thing applies to um, do they have these tangerines in the store that I see all the time. And it's like these little small tangerines. It, it's, it's sort of it's, it's like it's something that, you know, you want your kids to get, but they're seedless. So it's GMO. And also they're extremely sweet. Um, and though, you know, it's like, yeah, I'd rather have, uh, a sweet, uh, vet sweet fruit than candy. Um, you know, that's the part that happens. We've actually taken the fruits and the vegetables and we've done a lot of changes to it to the point that we're not getting the exact same, that feel that we need to get that, that, you know, the, the level of nutrients that we need to have from them. So great points all around. Uh Uh-huh. What's going on, Greg? Mm-hmm. Ah. All right. Wonderful question. Uh, what is the primary difference between good wood and the advanced formula? The lower the score, the more likely the advanced is recommended. Great call. That's basically <laughs> that's basically it. Especially the older you get. So um the difference between good wood and good wood advanced, um, both of them basically do this the exact same thing thing in terms of increasing your testosterone and your blood flow to the genital regions. The difference with Goodwood Advanced is that we added in stinging nettle, which is uh, have has been proven to help your body keep testosterone. Um, because what happens when we hit 40 to 50 years of age, you know, we start going through this transition where our testosterone can start turning it into uh, estrogen through a process called aromatase. And so you can start. That's why you start seeing guys in their 40s and 50s, uh, not only you know, hitting the grades, <laughs> but also um, you're talking about you're losing out on your that testosterone, so you're not getting, you're not as strong. You know, it takes a lot longer to heal from injuries. It's harder to lose fat. It's harder to gain muscle. It's harder to keep an erection. So um, the whole point of taking Goodwood Advance is for the older guys. And for guys lower on that score, so to make sure that you're actually keeping your testosterone. Um, you can do all the things that you want to as you get older to keep that testosterone level up, but nature has already pre-programmed you to start bringing it down uh, a notch. So you want to be very careful. So that's the big difference between uh, Goodwood and Goodwood Advance. If you're having a low score, then definitely go with the Goodwood Advance. Uh, it will help you out. Great, great question, guys. Hey, I really do appreciate you hopping on. This is Brian once again. Uncle B, Goodwood Radio, Goodwood University Radio. Uh, we're going to be back tomorrow, and we got another banger. What do we got tomorrow? Let me just take a look right quick. Um, because, you know, one of the things that I want to make sure we do is, you know, I'm trying to uh, give you guys as much information as possible. Like I said, we're up against the gun on a lot of the things that are happening with our world they're they're trying to set us up uh we tomorrow we're going to be talking about the secret ingredient for erections <laughs> i would tell you what it is right now but um uh, i'm not going to i want to see you tomorrow <laughs> so yeah uh stay tuned tomorrow 7 p.m we're going to be talking about that um we actually missed a uh, oh we can go to that but yeah we're going to be talking about that please if you have not done so go ahead and hop into goodwood university uh you'll see the link down below in the description uh let me just go ahead and give a quick shout out to guys who've already signed up uh wow 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 we had a bunch of guys sign up today shout out to aaron joe job earl keith carl uh donald hawk <laughs> Arnold McKinley, Vincent, Lonnie, Walter. We have a lot of guys in here. <laughs> we have a lot of guys who are joining us. Kevin, Jude, John. Yeah, I mean, all of this is uh, it, it's important. You know, one of the reasons why we have this particular uh, uh, challenge is so that we can get more guys to pay attention and, you know, help each other out. I mean, actually, I'm going to be honest, it helps me out when I see guys with their positive you know, uh, responses and, you know, just learning from guys. You, you always, I always learn something new. That's the reason why I like doing this. So, uh, we are coming up past a half an hour. Um, if you, unless we have any other questions, we're going to go ahead and close this out. Um, I will see you tomorrow. Uh, make sure you tune in. If you join us at good, uh, in Goodwood university, you'll also get an extra email, some more information, some more, uh, emails with some more, uh, we just, this is what we do. We just give as much information as possible so that you can get to the best po- you as you possibly can. So go into the descriptions, uh, join us at Goodwood university. Make sure you hit the like, 
subscribe and all that good stuff. Otherwise, gentlemen, thank you very much. I will see you tomorrow and we're going to uh, keep doing what we're doing. This is your Uncle B saying, get your game up and go hard. Peace out.